His remarks are pithy, punchy, powerful, and pleasant. Earning the crown. This is Wretched Radio. I believe the bad alliteration crown belongs on my head. Jimmy says you haven't proven it yet. I'm about to, Jimmy. Okay. What you're about to hear from Phil Johnson from a conference on the subject of social justice in Bakersfield, California. His remarks are pithy, punchy, powerful, and pleasant. I was looking for a P word that described helpful. And there it is, Jimmy, pleasant. So I can rightly use pleasant for my alliteration, demonstrating I'm the worst alliterator of all time. I guess I should spend more time in Southern Baptist churches. Let's return to the remarks of Phil Johnson in his presentation on virtue signaling, which was a really interesting perspective. And you would Leave it to Phil to be able to speak for about an hour on the subject of virtue signaling. Where in the world would you find a text or work through the Bible to find something that is so pervasive in our society? Well, Phil Johnson did. And that we, as Christians, have a tendency to follow the world, their interests and concerns, get involved for a short time, and then out we go because we're on to the next trend. But along the way, it allows us, I'm afraid to say, to put a badge on. See, I, I care about this int- this this issue. Uh, let me give you an example that Phil shared in Bakersfield. Do you remember Coney? Do you remember that, Jimmy? Do you remember that? Yeah, see, Mm-mm. you maybe weren't into evangelicalism enough. This was... 20 years ago, give or take, there was a dude in Africa who was wicked, treating people horribly. And if I recall, he had a bit of a syncretistic glop put together for his religious worldview, Muslim and Christian. Sorry, the twain shall never meet unless, of course, they repent and put their trust in Jesus Christ. He was an odd mix of voodoo and his behavior, what he was doing, uh, you just don't even want to recall it. Do you remember how hot we got about that? And let the world know, we got to fix this Coney problem. Well, Coney, 20 years later, or however many years it's been, I can't recall, is still on the loose. But we've moved on. Right now, have you noticed, and I'm not saying that this is a bad thing to be aware of and to speak about. But it is interesting that the evangelical church is talking so much about human trafficking coinciding in the wake of what is happening in the culture. It does seem like this is our kind of our latest thing. The good news is we've been on about abortion since Roe v. Wade. So we've stayed consistent with that concern, but there have been many concerns throughout the decades in evangelical Christianity that have been issues that we got excited about, concerned about, the culture changed, the subject grew cold, and we moved on to the next thing. And is it possible that we, like the world, can be guilty of virtue signaling? That we jump onto something not because we have a genuine, biblically informed reason for our concern, but because that's what everybody's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, we have to be, we even have to be careful on this particular subject of social justice. It is, in my estimation, a very serious threat to every single local church, every single one. I think the only way a pastor can keep his church from dividing over this subject is if he closes the door on social justice, locks it, seals it, puts a chair underneath the handle, and then has some strong arm men standing at the door to usher it out if it even tries to come in. Otherwise, this is hitting church after church after church after church. And we want to be careful that we're addressing it for the reasons that the Bible would indicate we should. We want to make sure that we're protecting theology. But if I'm engaging in a social justice conversation viscerally, as opposed to biblically rationally, it could be because I'm just trying to jump on the latest trend. 
be a part of the latest conversation. That is a temptation that we should assiduously avoid. Phil Johnson, in a pithy, punchy, powerful, and pleasant way, presented all of the differences, just lickety split, lightning speed, indicating we got this thing figured out. When this first started, I don't know if you remember, let me try, it's a very difficult word, and this concept is really complicated because it comes from legal theory, so this tends to be a philosopher's, and there would be like 20 minutes of excuses for not being able to share this in a pithy, punchy, powerful, and pleasant way. We're able to do that now, and Phil Johnson demonstrated that beautifully. Redistribution of wealth is social justice. Mm -mm. God doesn't see stealing as a good thing, no matter what the pretext. Affirmative action, that is a social justice idea. A biblical justice idea is, oh, no, 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 no. We, 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 we don't choose based on skin color. Reparations, a social justice issue. The Bible would say, no, you're responsible for your own stuff. And if there is a contemporary restitution that needs to be made, you should do that probably with repentance, but you are not liable for the behavior of your great-great-grandparents. Ezekiel 18, privilege is bad in the social justice world. In the biblical justice world, God is just fine with privilege. He calls it blessings. Compassion, well, does social justice have something to say about that? Social justice has a twisted idea of compassion where, you know, borders should be open and courts should be lenient to criminals. In other words, no laws. So the nice thing to do is to lift laws because we don't want somebody getting arrested. That's just not biblical justice at all. However, there are three more distinctions between social and biblical justice, courtesy of Phil Johnson. Social justice says we should believe all women, and it, takes, it tends to take accusations against authority figures at face value without any corroborating evidence. If you're a member of any privileged class and you are accused of any form of abuse, you will be deemed guilty unless you can prove your innocence, and maybe not even then. Biblical justice insists on due process. <sighs> If you've ever wondered, where do we come up with all these concepts that runs our world in the West? It's the Bible. Due process. You're innocent until proven guilty. In other words, just because somebody makes an accusation, do we take it seriously? Absolutely. But justice, biblical justice, means before we just condemn somebody based on the testimony of one witness, no, we've come up with a court system for that form of justice. The standard and the ultimate goal of social justice is an absolute equality of outcome. Daryl talked about this last night. So that everyone gets the same test scores, everyone gets the same privileges, and so on. You know, the participation award... The standard and goal of biblical justice is true righteousness. And true righteousness is defined by the character and the commandments of God. Speaking of Daryl Harrison, I actually caught a little bit of Daryl who spoke right before Phil. You know Daryl. He does a podcast with Virgil Walker. He's actually at Grace to You now. And he has been an individual who has been very helpful in the conversation about social justice issues. I heard him preach, and I, I honestly, I it, I wasn't in advance thinking, like, I wonder if he'll be any good. But then when I started watching him, I'm like, hey, he's actually pretty good. <laughs> Equality of outcome. That's just not the way the Bible operates. Don't we have a parable of the talents? That there can be different outcomes, and those outcomes can even be rewarded. Social justice, uh, 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 everybody wins, which honestly is bad economic math because ultimately with social justice, everybody loses. One more thing. Under social justice, the government is sovereign. Under biblical justice, God is sovereign. 
That alone should put the kibosh on social justice. When you take a look at the amount of light that is shined into the government corridors from the social justice wing, it's very bright. Not so much a focus on God. Instead, it's a focus on government and what the government has to do to make things right, which in my estimation is a thorough undermining of the potency of the gospel, which is the only solution for our ethnic, not racial, our ethnic issues. When we look to the government to solve problems and to change people's hearts, we're on a fool's errand. We are because only the Holy Spirit can do that. Not a government. And for those one, two, three, four, eight reasons, I would encourage you again, please, dear pastor, guard your flock. The social justice movement would love to get a toehold because when they do, they kick the door down. And the next thing you know, your church will be divided. This is Wretched Radio. You're just watching a one segment from the four segments that we do every single day on Wretched Radio. If you'd like to watch the whole shebang, you can do so at wretched.org. Pepperoni pizza for Pete, which in an odd way is a lot like the difference between imputation and expiation. Are you familiar with the difference, Pete? I didn't order a pizza. But it actually in Latin means completely, to completely atone. It's a Latin word, expiationem. And yet an action noun because it comes from the past part of the family.